15th July. We have simultaneous interpretation, channel one English, channel two French. Mr. President, before we take questions from the media, may I kindly ask you to deliver your remarks, if you prefer. To be greeted by the press, and let's uh, set away and go to the business. Thank you, sir. So we will now begin uh, taking questions from the media. If you allow, we can take one at a time. Let's start with any questions? Swedish radio? Please remember to introduce yourself on the media house uh, you represent before asking your question. Uh, so, is it on? Uh, uh, Richard Marienberg, Swedish radio, just a very short question. After the elections, what will be your, on top of your to-do list? What's your priority number one? Um, the priority number one after we've gone through all of this um, is to continue to make as much progress as we can in the area of uh, security and stability of our country, uh, social, economic development and progress, and um, con continuing to see the country really grow in all aspects of uh, um, development. So it, it's it's just the same path we have been on, rebuilding our country, growing it uh, towards uh, prosperity. That that is uh, uh, what is preoccupying us. Thank you, sir. Let's have another question. NBS, Canary. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Gunnar Mbume from NBS TV. My question is, with the percentages uh, from your victory in the past elections, it is evident that the Rwandans still want you to be their leader, and I will not be surprised after what comes out after Monday. My question is, what does Rwanda without Paul Kagame look like in your own eyes? Because as a leader of today, is it something that bothers you at night that at some point when you are not here, Rwanda should not plunge into chaos yet again? Well, I'm not sure what uh, happens when I'm not here. Uh, I don't want to guess uh, and, and just start imagining things I do what I have to do while I'm here, and uh, I'm doing it with the people of this country as uh, not only you have seen, but also what you, you've just uh, referenced, uh, what has happened in the past. I don't think there is a uh, Kagame only. It is Kagame with these people, you see. Uh, we make progress because we are together. And, and these people, the Rwandans, contribute a lot, make things happen. I only provide the leadership as by their choice. So, uh, and I'm sure when I'm not there, uh, there will be another choice they will make. Uh, the choice that can even uh, lead them better uh, without ruling out the fact that 
Yes, things may not be as good as they have been, but that is life, that's what happens. So Rwanda has been there before me, before I was, even before I was born, or before I came back to this country because I have uh, lived outside of it for a long time as a refugee, and you know the story. I was a refugee in Uganda, and many other colleagues who are behind the, the progress we are making. A uh, number of them have been uh, refugees uh, in many other parts of the world, mainly the region whether it is Burundi, Tanzania, Kenya, many others, uh, Uganda with me, and beyond. So the story is that Rwanda has been there and will always be there, like uh, all other countries. Uh, they will, the Rwandans will enjoy uh, being Rwandans uh, in different ways or contexts. Or others have suffered many for being Rwandans, like we have seen, again, owing to bad politics. So I can only really answer for what we are doing as Rwandans when I'm here as their leader what uh, happens when I'm gone will happen. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I imagine among these Rwandans there are people who can lead this country even better than they can or have done. Uh, so it's a, it's a story, by the way, that goes on everywhere in the world whether it is where you come from or other countries in the region or beyond or these rich developed countries. Uh, yes, uh, leaders come and go and uh, different things happen owing to the leader who is in uh, place, or, or the politics around uh, that supports that leader, and uh, things keep changing, so Rwanda is not uh, any different. Thank you, sir. Let's have some questions in the back. Uh, Isli Voice, and then Labelle TV. Good afternoon, Mr. President. My name is Amina Wako from the Isili Voice Kenya. And my question is, as East African, we see the back and forth uh, about peace in Eastern Congo. Is Rwanda an obstacle to that peace? And in your perspective, what do you think the East African community and the AU and the international community should do to ensure the sustainability of peace in the Eastern Congo and the region at large? Thank you. Mm. Um, this subject uh, matter of uh, Eastern Congo peace and stability for Rwanda for the region and for Congo and beyond uh, has been uh, an issue for a long time. I even don't know how to explain it so that a week or two or a month from now you don't ask me the same question. Because I've been asked this question like a hundred times. I've tried to explain, I've given context, I've given the history, and why 
this problem exists, but it keeps coming back. Uh, and, and by the way, the, the, again, if you are talking about the current problem uh, in Eastern Congo, uh, one, you, you may not wish to detach it from I want to, to repeat that Eastern Congo is Congo. It's not another country on its own. So when you're talking about Eastern Congo problems, you're talking about Congo's problems. And, and people always miss that. I don't know why. But the history of it, I try to be brief, uh, That problem has uh, the thing called the M23 has been there for a long time, and the conflict arising out of uh, or involving with uh, involving uh, M23 has happened twice. The first one was in 2012. Now the other one is just recent. But in between, there was a 10-year period. If you were a very keen observer or journalist, you would try to link the two and ask yourself, why? Why did we have this problem in 2012? And then we have it 10 years later again. All it means, simply, is that the problem actually was not resolved then. Otherwise, if it had been resolved, they wouldn't have it again 10 years after. The very same problem. Uh, but if you don't know, let me again repeat. The Eastern Congo problem is twofold. One is that of the Congolese citizens who are persecuted and uprooted from that place and sent outside as refugees, others killed, others imprisoned, others and so on and so forth. And simply because they are called Tutsis. In other words, the kind of politics behind it is that maybe these people called the Tutsis don't belong here, they belong to Rwanda. Or in, an, in other circumstances, they, it would be, be, they would belong to Burundi because they have the same uh, population configuration. Now, then when you look at it deeply, and, and by the way, even uh, the Congolese uh, admit this, the Congolese government or leaders, they say these people are actually Congolese. Now, if they are Congolese, why you uproot them and send them where? Why don't they have the rights as citizens of that country, like others? And uh, if you choose to, we have, here in Rwanda we have, 20, uh, now it is 125,000 refugees from Eastern Congo of this kind of people. Maybe you should even take interest visiting these camps and interviewing these people and asking them what their history is. So how does Rwanda become responsible for this? That is one part. The other part is of, you have heard of something called FDLR. These are genociders, the remnants of these murderers of our people here in 1994. The names are known, even now I can give you 20 names of their leaders who were here, who killed the people in 1994, who are there and leading 
these groups. The majority of people came back home. You remember so many, well over a million, actually close to two. In 94, Rwandans had fled and went into Eastern Congo. 99.9% of that group came back home. We have reintegrated them in this country. Again, you can look for these people they are everywhere. If you want, we can organize for you to meet, we'll send you to villages where they live, different villages, and you talk to them, they will tell you the story. They have come back, they have been reintegrated. They are not uh, a problem to anyone, and no one is a problem to them. They have settled. But that small group that stayed behind is that one which links with other people from outside, uh, some of them Rwandans, others just outsiders in their own countries who associate with the politics of that time, 1994, of this country. 1994, when the genocide was taking place, there were countries outside, people who either politic in the, play part in their politics or the, who were associated with this genocide, with its history, and so on and so forth. So these few people who live in Eastern Congo, and some of them live abroad, they work with these people, and all along they have been holding, uh, they, they have been hoping that uh, they can come back to this country and uh, do the kind of things they used to do when they were still in charge here. And now the government of Congo has armed these people in fact, two forms. One, they have even integrated them in their armed forces. Others uh, operate on their own, but alongside these government forces to fight these uh, people being persecuted, I mentioned, associated with them 23 or associated with 120,000, 25,000 people who are living in camps here in Rwanda. And in fact, a bigger number, by the way, lives in the camps in Uganda. There is a, big, a bigger number of refugees, including these people, in Uganda. So, you have seen in the media, everywhere, this is what I'm saying. I really thought you people in the media are more intelligent than this, but you keep disappointing. It is simple. If you investigate a case to know the facts, but I think what happens is that you may even be having the facts but you want to use them to suit your thinking, or you are, I don't know where you come from. If you are so much in love with FDRR, then you always distort things because you want FDRR to be seen in a good light. If you don't like Rwanda, that's a very common thing, uh, then you put things the way that we put Rwanda in a bad light. Uh, but that's a different issue. We are used to that. So, I, I, I take time a bit, if you will, to elaborate on this. So the whole story, the narrative has been created now, as you see, Rwanda, is involved in Congo. Even the experts, I'm sure you have seen this uh, uh, group of experts report. I don't know what uh, expertise they have, but uh, they write about 
Rwanda's forces, RDF, in Eastern DRC. And then they are very silent on government of Congo associating with the Federal and creating it and arming it and growing it to be a bigger force. They are very silent on that. That is how far their expertise go. And uh, so the narrative is formed to make it uh, sound like uh, Eastern Congo's problem is actually created by Rwanda. But from these facts I'm telling you that can be cross-checked as to their veracity, uh, will show you a different story. We, 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 uh, and again, the narrative has been about turning a perpetrator into a victim. And this goes very well and relates to the genocide, the story, and the uh, story of Rwanda. Uh, and it is not just in the region, it goes way beyond. You saw, uh, I was talking about the journalists uh, a while ago, you have seen a, cons a consortium of journalists, journalists putting themselves together from across the world or to just uh, put Rwanda in a certain uh, light where the, the Rwanda is always uh, the bad guy everywhere for itself, for the region, for the continent, and so the game goes on and on and on. So that, that just doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. Uh, and that relates very well with the story of Western Congo, which I'm explaining to you. In fact, in the same room, some time back, uh, another journalist was asking me, why are you helping uh, M23, and so on and so forth. Because of the contempt I had for uh, this kind of, and I still have for this kind of narrative, uh, it made me give him uh, uh, a reply, like I was saying, if it were you, why would you not help M23? And why I was saying that, um, was to inform this person that actually the problem is not M23. The problem is not Rwanda. You have to look deeper to understand why this, uh, why would somebody who was taken to Congo during the colonial period be shown exit from that place and sent to Rwanda, what crime has that person committed? Or what crime has Rwanda committed that that happened? Who is responsible? Uh, you know it very well in, in, in Uganda, in Kisoro that district has many Ugandans but associated with Rwanda because in fact along the border along the border we have relatives on one side some living on one side others living on the other side it dates back that time of colonial period. But I have never had Uganda disassociate itself or, or 
persecute or remove these people from Uganda and send them to Rwanda. Neither would we be saying, you know, you have relatives across. Why don't you find them there and go and live with them and leave this place? So why, why does it happen in Eastern Congo? And, and why do people get confused about it? To the point they keep asking questions relating to it. So the issue can't be that Rwanda has forces in Eastern Congo. No, the issue must be ask yourself, why? If that is true, why? That's how really intelligent people should behave. You, you should be asking yourself, why? Why, why is, uh, much as you could also be asking yourself, why are these Congolese being uprooted from Congo and sent as refugees to Uganda or to Rwanda? You should be asking yourself this question, or you should be asking the ones behind it. Should be asking these Congolese, why? Why they will be doing that? Because the issue of whether Rwanda is in Congo or doing this or doing that, in fact, comes much later. And I'm happy to explain to you once you've answered these underlying questions. So, sorry to take that long, but it has been repeated every time. And then you have experts telling a story that doesn't reflect any expertise. So, uh, and, and this, this, what I'm telling you are things I tell these people of the UN or whether European Union or US or whoever, some of these journalists or even the political officials who come and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that's why this world is in turmoil no wonder you just have people I think people have been operating like robots they, they, so that is the, the answer my sister Thank you, sir. We'll stay in the back, uh, Sila, and then we go to Arefi. Alors, bonjour. Je suis Panda Sila de la Belle TV Sénégal. Alors, Monsieur le Président, Son Excellence, le Rwanda est aujourd'hui en Afrique et partout dans le monde considéré comme un modèle de réussite, de développement. De, ré, euh, de sécurité 30 ans après le génocide. Alors, quelles sont les clés de cette prouesse Et ma deuxième question, la constitution du Rwanda de 2015 vous autorise à rester au pouvoir jusqu'en 2034. Comptez-vous rester au pouvoir jusqu'à cette date d'échéance Je vous remercie. Well, I, I, I'm sure there are other success stories across the world, even on our continent. People do what they have to do, but in our case, uh, I think we have made progress because uh, we have uh, concentrated on uh, the real issues that matter to people, and that is the people themselves. We have concentrated on what matters to them, what improves their lives, and we have uh, deployed every penny of our limited resources to just do that, whether it is in the area of uh, education, health, infrastructure, agriculture, for their food self-sufficiency, and uh, Many things we have, and, and, and I'm saying deployed every penny, but also meaning that we make sure that the, every penny that we have goes in the right place. In, in many places, it is, uh, it is stolen 
from the treasury to where it is supposed to be, maybe half of it is, is pocketed by some individuals who gets lost through some other means. So we make sure we, we, we fight that uh, alongside everything else we are doing. So th this, and, and we are committed to doing it, and we are not apologetic <laughs> about doing it, to, to make sure that we, we hold ourselves accountable and we hold each other accountable, and that's, that's important. I think for us, the progress we make, even with our limited resources, is because we make sure that every part of that goes to where it was planned to go. So that, that really is, is, is the issue. Now, talking about um, politics, or to um, the campaigns, the elections, and um, me being there and so on. You know, human beings, all of them, all of us, without exception, is none, live only for so long. All of us. In fact, like maybe if I'm looking at around the room, maybe in another 40 years, if there would be power on the higher side, I'm not sure, but let me be generous. In another 50 years, none of the people sitting here in this room will probably be around. So that's where we all go, <laughs> no question about it. But uh, while we are living, while we are still on, in, on this earth, uh, we want to do what we want to do as individuals, as people, as, meaning collectively, and so on and so forth. So collectively, and by the way, it started by accident, meaning for me to be the president, it started really as an accident. Well, first of all, as an accident or luck that I survived the, the, the many years I, uh, that could have taken my life as, as many others' lives were lost. So. I was lucky to, to, to be alive to the point that I became president. So, so it wasn't by plan at all. Even if it was to be by plan, I was still lucky. The second is that um, even uh, as I was still alive at the beginning of this whole process, the 30 years we've been here, some other people were supposed to, were chosen to be president. I wasn't. Uh, I was suggested in 94, I refused. I just felt I wasn't in a position to be president. So I, I worked with others to put another president there. Who later on, whatever happened, happened, was removed by parliament. And it's like those who wanted me to be present at the beginning came back to me and said, you see, we told you. We told you that uh, allowing another person like this to be present, I said, I didn't know. Maybe you didn't know also, you're just blaming me for... So they said, now you should be president. Okay. Then I had been here six years, I think. doing other things for my country, I accepted to be president. Now, from that time, it's like uh, I committed an offense, uh, accepting to be president. Every day I'm being asked, when are you leaving? When are you going? <laughs> so, you know, these people who made me president, are telling me they still want me to be president. Somebody somewhere says, no, 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 you, you are here too long. 
But these guys who even ask these questions or who tell me that, even if they wanted, they cannot be the president of Rwanda because they don't belong here. So now I, I really get confused, and I think this is not fair. <laughs> because when, when are you leaving? When, 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 when? Now, as I have said, there was, there, there, there was a time I wasn't president. I didn't even want to be president. I refused, actually. Now, when I became president, and the people of this country, who matter to me more than anybody anywhere else, keep saying, we want you here. Oh, by the way, we have also had open conversations with them in our meetings of the, the party I lead, I have been telling them to actually look for another person. I've told them, I've told them in 2017, I started 2010. 2017, I was more vocal on that. And even recently, I told them the same. The, the, the leaders of the party are here, the chairman, uh, vice chairman, and the secretary general. In this room, they are here with you. They can tell you what I told them. I've been asking them to, even if I'm agreeing to be president, they should not forget to be working very hard to identify people who will uh, follow in my footpaths. Every day I remind them. Now, but I think for them they're operating like, as long as he has some breath in him, let's uh, squeeze every bit of it. <laughs> so, and I've been telling you, no, I don't have to stay here doing. So, but I know for sure somebody will be found sooner than later if we don't count the many years I've been around going forward. Because that is a necessity. So, but the other necessity that conflicts with that is for the people, they are my party and the people of this country. It goes beyond the party of our PFT actually goes to the whole country. When they, so the, 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 there is a conflict between the necessity for me to do other things and somebody else leads the country or even the party. Uh, but um, there is also the reality that those people who make that decision are also still demanding that I stay there. So my question is to them as it is to me, so you want me to stay here until when? <laughs> because I know there will be a time when uh, I shouldn't be here, or I want to be here. So, but if you could only bear with us and it becomes our problem, internal problem which we have to resolve, Maybe we shall find a solution sooner than later. But when from outside, where you have your own problems to deal with, of your own, in your own countries, I guess there is nobody who doesn't have a country here. So better tend to those problems of your country, or your countries, and, and leave this problem of ours to us. We shall resolve it one way or the other. And whatever happens, whether there will be better people than me, even who, and, or those who will come and try to run down what we have been building over the years, there is nothing we can do about it. Especially there is nothing you from outside can do about it. Thank you, sir. BBC?
Mrakoza nyako wa preza kubrika uh, ni kwa chuzo ndo mnyama kuru wa BBC uh, BBC? BBC oh, Hadi ya mbuki chinyaru wanda <laughs> Yeko yeko Ok Mwami minachumi numu nani uh, ya kishinga mateje kwa yato iteje kwa jena vishira humu shara fatizo mungufasha haba kozi kwa hasi chane chane uh, Riko iteka liya ministri liya goma kuchira ho Mshara fatiza na huli jeze li soka kuyuzungu Nifuza kubaza ni wali mamu zato nilita soka Kandi ni wali cho mza wikora homu ni mande ya nita Mrakozi I can na visu visa Mubudio nubu nhabi nhabi zineza Ibiya libyo Ibi mshara fatizo Ibiya shizgo niti yako liko ni sohoke changwa ni tango Na hagu na kugura kwa nhabi zi Vira nanga jukubari mbiba zgo na BBC Anu hanu mjihugu bifata hanu 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 mbaza kanda wa fitu Uliyewa kuyo waza Hariko chona agusezi ranya biyo nuku visu uzo makureba Ukubi na tei ni mhaamfu Mbele ho sabaja wakushira hili yote jeko Bari shiza hongori kore njine Ni bahari chitara shobo tse changwa sebari veshe mungengo imari Basa nzen hawa ushawa zewe fiti ari kubia na ba fiti ari kubia na biyo biya gumba kuwa biya rizgo nberi yego shira hu ili yote yako ri gira ba nukuza mo ri mishara cha ngu chip ari kubia cho chiba zoto nomba praza ku shaka kuri yabo kujisu vizande tse tuza bishira hanzi na wewe kujira. Thank you, sir. We can take two last questions. Sunday live. Let's see how we can uh, go for as long as we can. Okay. At least you are not complaining about taking long on answering questions. No, you can only you. complain about my being in a powerful long, but uh, <laughs> I, I allow you to ask for as long as we can be here. Sunday live. My name is Matlango Isaac from Sunday Times in South Africa. Uh, now that you seek a second mandate, uh, what do you think are the aspirations of the Rwandan people as you want them to grant you another mandate on Monday? What do they want to see in the next five years? Mm -hmm. By the, I hope I, I, won't, I will not be misunderstood. I actually haven't been seeking any mandate. The RPF and these Rwandans have been asking me to stand for another mandate. At a personal level, I would comfortably go home and rest. It really takes a toll on me to handle these Rwandan problems. But uh, while I have been there, and I am there now, and I may be there for a few more years, uh, I think even the demands have been made clear by these Rwandans. I'm sure if you have followed these campaigns, the rallies, you have heard them. They want more development, want more roads, more hospitals, more schools and quality increased for all of that. And um, that's what I'm thinking of providing. They need uh, more investments in infrastructure, in technology, in um, being able to feed themselves, and feed the markets, thereby earn money from that. So it's all what we have to do that we have been doing, but if we can move faster, if we can do better delivery of services, different sectors, I think that's what the Rwandans want. 
So that's, that's what preoccupies me, that's what I have in mind, that we should be working together with Rwandans to, to deliver that to them. Mm. Thank you, sir. Koloba, welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Your Excellency. My name is uh, Frederick Koloba Mtivi. I'm an independent researcher and analyst. <coughs> Uh, Your Excellency, I've had the good fortune to follow you around throughout this uh, campaign. And there are two issues that have come to my mind that I thought I should ask you about. One of them <coughs> is almost at every rally, you've been giving this message to young people to step up and take responsibility for the gains Rwanda has made in the last 30 years. You, you keep going back to it at every rally. And uh, I've been wondering, is there a deeper message in this, or is this just what, what we see? Are you saying something deeper than what seems apparent? The second question, uh, Your Excellency, is uh, watching all your rallies, um, it strikes me that the RPF is a formidable political machine. Clearly, anyone who looks at it can see it. I'm wondering, what it is that you and others in the RPF are doing to ensure that when you're gone, this thing we see going up doesn't go down? Mm. Yeah. Um, well, really the message, whether deeper or what it has been or wrong, is the young people uh, understanding and feeling that they are the ones who hold responsibility for their lives, the lives of everybody in the country, and especially in the near future, they are the, they are the leaders. It's what I'm raising and alerting them about. It's not tomorrow that I tell them that. It should be yesterday that uh, they became aware of that. So that, that is the, the, the only essence, the real essence of repeating that message. Uh, and the progress that has been made, that people refer to uh, under the RPF and so on and so forth, uh, yes, in fact, happened. Even the, the liberation itself happened uh, with the young people uh, taking responsibility for, for all that. Uh, even when I became president, I think I was still in my 30s. And uh, the others who are everywhere doing different important things have, are much younger than me. So I'm only telling them that it is now that you young people should be thinking about this responsibility you, you have to yourselves and to the country. So that, that is... Uh, and again, it actually links with the second question you, you, you've asked. Once people uh, grow up understanding their responsibilities and that things that don't happen or that you don't wait until somebody else comes to your rescue and helps you out for on different things, it is that group of people that from whom there will emerge leaders who step forward uh, and even be leaders of this country and one way or another. And um, with the sense of responsibility comes the understanding of the story of where you have come from and where you are and where you want to be. 
So, if there has been some level of success with my leadership, it can't be me alone, but also it doesn't mean that it is only me alone that can succeed as we lead this country. So it, it, it just comes from that conversation, it comes from uh, the experience and what you see, the results, and you know, at the moment you go through a number of years uh, following the story and associating the message with the results. I think many people are formed by that and are helped by that to go beyond just the ordinary and thinking they are there just to be led, but also can aspire to lead. That's what gives, otherwise there is no mathematical formula that you can apply and say this and this and this and this put together, you always come out like that. So this is why I'm saying I cannot tell what is going to happen when uh, the current uh, crop of leaders, whether it is the RPF uh, or um, government, that uh, what we will follow will either be a disaster or will be better, or will, I have no formula to, and I think nobody has that formula anywhere whether here or anywhere else. But you keep investing the right way. You invest in the people, uh, like through education, uh, for people to have good health, and to have, but also to have clarity of mind uh, as to what uh, uh, countries, people, societies are, and. Uh, what uh, these real aspirations are, and that they are the only ones, they are mainly the ones who can make things happen. So I have no other way of, of telling, of foretelling what, uh, <laughs> but I try to do what I think matters in, in the preparation for the future by the people that are around especially the young people who, and what I see encourages me now, when, when, when uh, throughout the campaigns and campaign rallies, I think you can see people and feel assured that they are there for a purpose, they know what they are doing maybe, they, and they will do it when that time comes. Viewer. Hello, Mr. President. My name is Mariama Diallo. I'm the Nairobi Bureau Chief for VOA. Um, so a lot of my questions have been asked, but I do want to follow up mm. on that, um, you know, the post-Kagame era. Um, you just talked about, you talked about leaders come and go, but leaders, good leaders also plan. So you talk about your party uh, haven't been able to find somebody, but my question to you is, would you be participating in finding, in grooming that next person who is gonna be here uh, to continue the work that you've done? Uh, my second question has to do with uh, what, what just happened in Kenya uh, with President Ruto. Uh, you were just there recently participating in the African Development Bank meeting, um, so, I'm just curious to know, have you spoken to President Ruto about the recent event that has uh, happened in his country? Uh, given that the issue that he's dealing with has to do with Gen Z's, the youth, and their preoccupation, and I think that's not an issue just uh, to Kenya. It's, uh, are you worried about uh, something like that could, could have repercussions in the region? Um, I just, 
uh, covered elections in Senegal, and those young people had the same issues, the same issues that the Kenyan uh, youth has, which is the high cost of living, uh, uh, basically jobs, jobs, jobs. Uh, so just wondering uh, for you uh, what, um, you know, what you think about the events that, are, that have happened in Kenya, and are you worried that it could spread in the region? Thank you. Yeah. But I think the first question has really more or less been answered. But let me add, I don't like this whole idea of grooming. <laughs> grooming focuses on one person or another. I, I, I like, I prefer uh, doing it generally. Like when I talked about uh, encouraging young people, then uh, government making investments in the future, like education, like business, we are health, blah, 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 and so on and so forth. And then that part of politics always being there, reminding them, hey, hey you guys wake up. This is your responsibility. You know, you, you can't just be there. So from among them, one or two, whatever number you want, among these people, there will always be somebody to play that role. You would be grooming, grooming somebody, a specific person for. This is why I told the party last time, recently, that, uh, in fact, I told them openly, it's like uh, maybe you, you were even listening to me, but the question, was answered then. I told them, I said, I'm not going to name anybody for you to lead you. You be the ones to look for somebody to lead you from among us. These people sitting here, we were about 3,000 in, in this, uh, some other place uh, where there is a big conference hall. And I was telling everybody, I said, I'm not going to anoint somebody for you. You, you'll be the ones, you keep looking around and appreciating people and doing that. And from that bunch of people, you should have a leader you want, but not the leader you point a finger at and say, this is going to be your leader. Actually, that is a, a, a recipe for maybe the disaster you keep referring to after me, after me. I don't want to leave somebody and leave a disaster for the people <laughs> after me. So if they choose the disaster, it will be their disaster they have chosen, not the one I have given them. I don't want to be associated with that. So there is, but once you, the politics, and then doing the things that matter to people. But once you interest people in politics and they become part of it, they always uh, have somebody, you know, fairly and maybe justifiably chosen from among them to, to lead. Um, so then what you said about, I, I don't um, very much like, again, talking about other countries, other societies, and what they have, whether it is progress or it is problems or whatever. People will always emerge out of that and they address their own problems. So that Gen Z you're talking about, that should not always be associated with being part of the problem, you know, where things explode and no, no, no. No, they, they actually they should be part of preventing that by, but of course I, I, I fully understand what that means. It, it all boils, comes down to politics. 
uh, if these young people are, are, are involved uh, from the beginning and the, the culture grows where the young people participate and uh, in the good politics uh, of, of any country, then they don't end up just being, uh, I mean, people demonstrating on the streets, destroying this or doing that, no. They actually end up being part of a situation or creating it that prevents that from happening. Uh, and, and, and that, therefore, that calls for them to be linked right from the beginning uh, with the politics and uh, even above where the higher leadership is uh, down to that level of this generation, uh, there must be uh, communication that uh, uh, enables them to, and so that things they complain about don't uh, happen in one incident, in one explosion of things. And, no, but that flow of grievances happens uh, in the daily life. And, and then there is always going to be a way of addressing that and therefore preventing uh, some disasters from happening. Otherwise, I, I, I always keep off other people's affairs. I, I have no lessons for anybody. I, I, I'm stuck with my own problems, trying to <laughs> deal with them on a daily basis. So I, I can't add on uh, that burden of uh, even uh, assuming too much that I have an answer for other people's problems. So I, I, but every situation has problems, but there's also a way to address those problems. But it is the people of any country that we really have to deal with that. Thank you, sir. We can take two last questions. Mm. But there are some people on your left uh, who are up Which, there asking. We are balancing both sides so that everyone does not feel left out. Uh -huh. We could go to Genoa. Good afternoon, Your Excellency. I'm Ji Li from Xinhua News Agency, the China state media. So my question related with China. Uh, since Rwanda and China established dipl diplomatic relations, the bilateral relationship has been remarkable development with cooperation deepening in various fields. So how do you evaluate the achievements of the bilateral relationship over the past 50 years? And in which areas do you expect further cooperation between the two countries in the future? Thank you. We have had a good relationship with China and uh, we want to keep it so. Uh, we have not had actually problems with China at all. Uh, that doesn't mean we agree on everything. Sometimes we disagree or we agree, but when you disagree and you, there is a channel of communication to each side, the air, it's uh, understanding or grievances if it amounts to that, it, it always is a good relationship. And we have a good relationship with many other countries, whether in Asia or the West. Or, and uh, it is a principled relationship we, we always insist on. Uh, we have had, of course, relationships where some people want to be overbearing and they're telling you, you must do this, you have to do this, you shouldn't do this. And uh, we have been in a very good position and have learned through experience. We, we politely but uh, firmly tell people uh, that uh, we also have ideas about uh, what we want and how we want uh, the relationship to be and what we want in that relationship. And uh, 
Some we have agreed and it has caused problems, others it doesn't cause problems. Even with those who don't understand and it causes problems, we, we are happy to go along and even do the same next time. We, 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 on this one, we, so far, we are firm about what our country wants, what we are doing, and we happily tell anybody who thinks they can come riding over us to tell them that uh, they've, you, made, they've made a mistake. Al Jazeera. It's coming to you. Leif Mustak from Al Jazeera. Um, mm -hmm. Back to, to the same report you mentioned before, Your Excellency, about uh, issued by, by United <coughs> Nations, was covering. Um, Two, two things, the, 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 the mining and the military uh, situation in uh, east, of, uh, east of Congo. And four days later, there is, there is a statement from the uh, State Department of the United States was uh, focusing on the mining. In your point of view, Your Excellency, um, why both the report and the uh, statement, they just overlook the uh, political uh, situation. Thank you. Well, that is really a, a, question, a question I can't answer, even a hundred. So why they would be talking about that and not about themselves, I don't even understand. So that one, how can I answer that? Then you have a group of experts, uh, you said, talking about what? Mining, Mining and? and military situation. Military situation. Military situation, the way they talk about it, they talk about maybe 15% of, of the problem. Even then, they don't. Uh, put facts or evidence to it. This is why I, I think I explained it. If, if you are talking about RDF, RDF Rwandan Defense Forces, and M23, and you are silent, I think I answered that, and you are silent about FDRR, and uh, you are silent about the government of Congo expelling its own people from the country to go somewhere else. Uh, using uh, these genociders who are here, uh, who killed our people. How can I answer that honestly? I, I mean, you should be able to make that judgment yourself, or anybody here who, who sees that should be able to make the judgment. It's not up to me to answer that. I don't know how to answer it. I don't know how to answer that somebody is associated with the problem and is saying it the way they want people to see it or to understand it. I, I, I have no answer for that. It's, I can't explain it. They should be the ones to explain it. In fact, I wish one day you could meet those people and ask them and say, why are you, is it because this is not happening? Or is it because it is not there? Is that you are silent about it, that you are talking about something else that either is less important or actually is not happening, or if it was happening, it is happening for that reason you are silent about. Then they are the ones who can uh, explain it better than, than myself. But we have told all of them, uh, we have, maybe you have also seen how we have responded to some of it. 
but we have told them that by that they have already become part of the problem and they are not anywhere near being a part of the solution. But I thought we want, we must be having or looking at uh, finding ways to have a solution to that problem. But if you handle it like that, you are not uh, finding a solution. Rather, you are adding to the problem or even uh, complicating it even more. Thank you, sir. We'll take the last question now from RBA. Two more questions. If we could do quickly, we could have another two. Another two after yeah. RBA. Okay. Mm. Mnakoze chanya ni kwa Jean-Claude Mtuyezu, mwenye mkuu Arabia. Muminsi mumaze ni ya mamaza, mwako nzikuga luka kumbugo, ibuga yuko, ipotiki yuko ya mamaza nubundi, yiha ye, chaneko, efuwa ilaji ye, ifata nyani ndi mitu ya politichi. Muna garuka chane, kuwijanye, nubuda sabuga banyarugwanda. Ese, uubuda saa, tukwa bukako, buvwa kuchi, nanu wa netuki iba zango, mwini mandi kulichi yeho, ni ibichi mteka nyini za banyarugwanda, bijanye ni imbugo mukunzi kugaruka ho cyane y'ubudasaba narakoze cyane ubudasaba buturuka ku mateka na mateka nkora mbivuga buri munsi na mateka bituruka ho urwanda aho ruvuye byarubayeho hanyuma uko abantu babisohokamo urwanda rwa mateka ya maca kubiri no rwanda rushyira abanyarwanda bose hamwe ni ibintu bitandukanye mu ruko gushyira abantu bose hamwe rero bahera ku mateka mabi bakareba icyo u Rwanda rushyira abantu hamwe rukora kugira ngo abanyarwanda bose bibone mu bikorwa no mu bibageraho ibyo ubwabyo bisobanura bwa budasa ni nayo mpamvu ndetse aho twagiye tujya kwiyamamaza hose abantu baza ari benshi inshuro 10 zirenga niki baza ari benshi bavuga ubona bitabiriye iki kintu kimwe ubomba gutekereza nyine ukavuga kuti aba bantu bagomba kuba bumva neza aho tuvuye bumva neza aho dushaka kujya icyo batora rero ni iyo nzira ibaganisha aho bashaka kujya kandi bose Iyo bimeze bityo ibindi byose ni ubusa ibyo umuntu hagararika ntarange akavuga ati hari umuntu babujije kuvuga biki hari ibihumbi magana ngahe byahoze biraho bivuga ibyo ni no gukora ubusa uranabyihorera gukomeza so abanyarwanda rero cyo bashaka barakizibo barakerekana ari mu bikorwa ntabwo ari ni bikorwa by'amatora gusa ahubwo biri abikorwa by'amajyambere bigenda bibaho bikorwa n'abanyarwanda abanyarwanda bitabira buri kintu cyose iyo bahaye uburyo barabukoresha bakagera kubyo bifuza abo ngabo rero iyo bakubwiye cyo bashaka ni cyukora kuko ni ni ibyabo so ntabwo numva rero mu manda yindi ikindi se cyabishye kitari ugukomeza ibyo dusanzwe dukora nyine ibyo byiterambere by'umutekano no na nimiyoborere myiza Demokarasi gani kivuze? Demokarasi vuze imewa wari miiza, guhi tamo, abanu waka ya jara kuchwa shaka, nicho tu jara yezaku, kushira kumro, ni vyo ni vyo bi kome zanha, vindi bisha bia turuza hani tusha ukor. Skofia. Mwakoze nyako wa Perezo wa Repubulika nitwa Sikovia Mutesi ndu mwanditsi w'ikinyo wakuru mu ma urwa gasabo eh bigaragara ko abanyarwanda bamaze guhamagarirwa kujya mu bigo by'imari mu kwizigama ariko hashize igihe ministeri y'ubucuruzi n'inganda 
ndetse na ministeri y'imari bavuga ko hari uburyo abantu babaga muri banke populaire bafitemo imigabane iza kugurishwa ibikigo kimara ho kugira ngo ikomeze ibyo abaturage imigabane yabo ntibayihabwa imyaka irenga ibiri babaza iki kibazo batarabona igisubizo ifuzaga niba hari cyo mushobora kubafasha bakabona imigabane yabo cyangwa bakajya muri iyo banke y'ubucuruzi bagurishijwe urakoze nyakwaho yes icyo na gusezeranya cyo reka tuve muri ibingi bitubanze tujye twicere mu ntebe neza ni birangira byose byarangiye tujye usubiye muri leta no icyo tuzagiheraho ntabwo ntabwo numva aho gikomerera kuba kitarangira icyo rwose kizaba mu bya mbere biza biza cyemurwa cabinet ya mbere no yibona uzanye buzo uzanye hereza sms mwire ati tari cyakibazo tuzagiheraho mu byo tuzaheraho thank you your excellency we may conclude here i would like to thank you for your time and wish you a successful voting day on Monday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope um, there are not too many questions going back without being asked. So I think you covered all the questions. See you next time. Thank yeah? you. Yes, Thank you so much, Mr. President, for the, this time. Uh, this, um, there has been noticeable increase in, uh, in, in the genocide denial globally, and uh, with media outlets adopting narratives from figures like uh, um, Victor Ngabide, Charles Unana, Jambo Aisbael, and this is affecting actually remarkably the younger generation. How, uh, now that you are running for the, another term, how are you going to tackle these issues? And Muchi Nyarwanda, Nifuza Gakubariza Awa Nyarwanda, Baturiye Imirengita Ndukanye Munara, Tukwara Wonye, Ibikorwa Bijishichani, Nga Jemu Mukorera Awa Nyarwanda, Aho Uturele Tujenda Duhura, Nutundi, Duturana, Mumihari Mubuhaira ne Hakoreshwe Imihanda Iri Gutone. Ariko Hari Imirenge Mishane, Itarawa Shabuhura Nindi, Kujirango Bahaira ne Mujogoro She um Bahurani Vumbi, Changose Abandi Batawa Tina Mazi, Ibi Jomu Teganya Kubikora Hichi is the Bizaba. Well uh if you visa if you mehanda nivichi goose very kuriga hunda if it if it are Korwa Nuko Tarawana Nezubushovs, if you're the Shago Kora, Nubushovs, you've got to in Hivingan. Aruko Biratin, then he be here. Bijara Hoviga Korwa, Nibio Zakorwa, Nasses Ranyako Zakorwa, if you're yourself, your Gahunda, Vuzukoya Tanji, Niko Zako Meza, Kandizi Hutish, Kahugo Kurusha Hoku, Kuerako for Adusha Chisha, Amiko Kuburio. Yashora no quihut. If we join in genocide deniers, our body hope. Ingaru Kazab, you to get to Zirwan, Yakubi Tajiro, Vihutaza, the Sabatoya, Abatoya Mujamo Yanga. Mubishira hanze ibyo birahari bishyigikiwe n'abantu bamwe hanze n'iki birwa basakuza ariko nicyo nababwiraga ari ubwo basakuza ngo bagutesha umurongo uve kubyo wakoraga uje muri ibyo bitagira icyo kandi bamwe baranashyigikiwe bashyigikiwe n'ibihugu cyangwa imiryango cyangwa iki bifite ubushobozi ariko icyo dufite iyo bushobozi twebwe nuko ibyo ngibyo ntacyo byadukoraho hano na kimwe na haba bandi ba ingabire nabande bandi ingabire su yariko twari kuye bari twagiriye mbabaza kava mu mu gufungwa yarafunzwe ubunuba bakirimo ariko hasohokeye niyo neza yitura abanyarwanda buriya buriya nta 
amaherezo yo ntabwo azaba meza uramwihorera karwana ni niki murimo kibi kikaba ari cyo kimugira ingaruka nabandi bo bose babona baba mu Bufaransa baba hehe birwa basakuza bariya mwebwe baba twaye iki muzabareke niko bameze muzabake bapfurwa bapfuye na bakwiriye ku harabo bakorana nabo nk'ibi twahoze tuvuga by'intambara zo muri Eastern Congo nibindi iki gihugu cya Congo kirabafasha kibagira giteki ariko iyo bigeze aho ubonaho tubijyamo ariko muzi ko nabyo bafite aho bagarukira nabo nabo bageraho bigira ingaruka ku banyarwanda gusa gutyo icyo gihe yo byageze aho nyine ikibazo gishakirwa undi muti ubwo na cyo nibwira cyahungabanye igihugu cyacu cyangwa abanyarwanda kuri aho ngaho bifuriza urwanda nabi cyangwa bavuga nabi ntibikabatesha umwanya ngo bibaraze ijoro ry'ubusa mu gihe mu basubiza ariko yo bavuga ibitari byo mu basubize ariko barenze umurongo bakagira ikindi bakora ibyo byo ingaruka zabyo zirahari ntacyo bashobora kugeraho thank you your excellency mm -hmm. all right Hi, everyone. There are some snacks outside the room, so feel free. <laughs> 